Hello folks, this is Peter Smith, your teacher in cyberspace, and today we are learning about the 1910 Denzel and Loof, Dr. Floyd Moreland Carousel in Seaside Heights, New Jersey, which is where I live, and it is one of my passions that um, I am going to talk about today in my teacher in cyberspace lesson that I hope will be used all over the world and on Mars. Like I always say, I think Martian schools have linked into my uh, website and hacked in somewhere. But anyway, let me go to Chrome here. And just so, um, here, let me go up here. I wanted to show you something first, but just as in the side, as I always say, I turned my phone off, but should I get a phone call? It puts an annoying box up here. It makes an annoying noise and it um, will start any videos. And that sometimes has kicked off problems in previous screencasts, so I turn my phone off. But if I get a text across there, who knows? But anyway, I wanted to play this for you, and this is a pep talk from the little president, the kid president, and uh, it's very cute, and that's how I'm going to start off my lesson today, because it's about passions, and uh, finding your passion, and what you can do to make the world more awesome. I think we all need pep. Okay, that is the kid president. I keep calling him the little president by mistake. But he talks about how to make the world more awesome. And there's an article about it, which I could gladly show you if I go to this. Hang on just one second, folks. Like I said, I always say in my um, things here, there's no perfect technology. And, and why isn't uh, this coming up here? Discussion, you know, every other time I do this, it comes right up. But today, it's giving me an issue for some reason. Either my, e either my, um, oh, yeah, I know why. Because my site can't be reached because of in com internal computer glitch that I keep trying to fix. But we'll fix it. Here we go. All right. See, I told you, no, um, I can fix this problem. I just haven't fixed it yet. The, um, so I'm going to go down to um, 
these are my discussions for um, my uh, doctorate program that I take. And um, I just wanted to get to something which is here. Sorry. This is actually taking up extra time that we don't well, I should have been prepared. Always be prepared, people. But here, this is my discussion question. And I just wanted to go to the bottom of it. And uh, here we go. How will you make the world more awesome? I just liked this uh, particular uh, blog post. It was by a lady named Yasmin Cater. Like a hater with a K in front. But she's not a hater. Forget the haters because somebody loves you. But anyway, what she says is how to make the world more awesome. I like this. I use this as a... Um, a um, for some reason, again, when, oh, here we go. Um, she gives some advice, and um, the advice is this. Spark your passion and discover your purpose. And one of my passions, of course, is the 1910 uh, Denzel and Lou Floyd Moreland carousel that's being restored and rehoused in Seaside Heights, and we're going to learn about that today in the next thing. And it says plan your strategy, uh, step two, which is right here. And we've been planning it for a long time to um, Seaside Heights Borough, Chris Vaz, Joe Verderosa, Floyd Moreland himself, and Lou DiGiulio and I are the board of directors thus far of, board of trustees, I believe we are, of the uh, Historical Society, the Seaside Historical Society. And we've been planning a long time to restore and rehouse the carousel. Identify what's missing. It says, if you don't understand something, Google it. Take a course, find a mentor, or email me. I mean email me at uh, teacherincyberspace at AOL.com. I'll try to help you. But realize your potential. If you don't believe in yourself, nobody else will. Enjoy the experience. Um, don't surround yourself by people who are critical of your ideas. I don't. Uh, if I hung around with people who said, don't make a teacher in cyberspace uh, website and don't believe in the carousel, I wouldn't do it. Surround yourself with people who have your same dreams and ambitions. And then step six is live with your tribe. Um, surround yourself with those who share your craziness and passions. It makes you seem more normal. And uh, it says, are you ready to make something awesome happen? We would love to hear how you will make the world a more awesome place. And you're supposed to respond there. But I'm not responding there. I am going to go to this, which is, oh, here's my teacher in cyberspace uh, website. And I actually have, oh, I want to, I, the reason I have this up is because you can go right to the, um, the actual article that I'm going to read you. And uh, it's you got to click this. I might as well just do it. And it'll bring it right up. But let me try to make this as big as humanly possible. See if doing that helps. But I just wanted to um, read some of this to you. And hopefully some of the students at Hugh J. Boyd School in Seaside Heights will read this. Some of the teachers would uh, share this with the students. Uh, it could be shared at um, anywhere. Anywhere that they love Seaside Heights, um, the Seaside Heights Facebook page that I'm proud to be associated with, and um, whatever. But I usually don't read things to people. I've read this about 20 times, so I'm going to read what's important and what is not. And I'm going to show you it. But here is one of the horses of the Denzel and Louvre carousel. And if you look real closely, it says Dr. Floyd Moreland. All the horses were restored between, I believe, 1984 and 1986. And uh, at the, uh, with Floyd Moreland in charge. And then they named the carousel after him. Uh, it's forever known as the Dr. Floyd Moreland carousel. And it says here, and I'll read this first paragraph to you, the carousel at Casino Pier in Breakwater Beach in Seaside Heights, which it is going to move now to a new building. It is property of the Borough of Seaside Heights in trust of the Board of Trustees of the Historical Society. It was built by the Denzel Carousel Company around 1910. It's a four-row machine, which means it has four rows of horses, with 53 horses, five menagerie animals, and two chariots. Menagerie animals are, uh, I think there's a donkey and other animals that are not horses, usually a carousel or a merry-go-round, and they're known by lots of different names all over the world. But um, And I could share them with you, but um, maybe in a few minutes we'll get to that. But um, lots of different names um, around the world, but carousel and merry-go-round are what we pretty much know them as. But um, anyway, this this carousel that we have on the boardwalk 
It's still in place, but it's going to be moved as of the fall. It's going to be dismantled, and it's going to be sent to the leading restorers, I would say in the world, but at least in the country. And it's going to be restored and rehoused again down between Carteret Avenue and Sampson Avenue in Seaside Heights, and there's an empty lot there. And there's going to be a building built, and the carousel is going to be rehoused in that building at when it's restored. And that might be a few years from now when it's finished. This is 2019, and it is June. So I anticipate, let's say, 2021, it should be finished. But anyway, it says here that the first known location of the carousel was in Island Beach Park in Burlington Island in the Delaware River between Pennsylvania and New Jersey. So, of course, the Delaware, George Washington crossed the Delaware, boys and girls, and uh, other people, adults, would know that too. That is the river in between uh, New Jersey and Pennsylvania. And uh, this is where Burlington Island is. And that was um, where this 1910 carousel first started. Uh, it was added there in 1910, it says. But in 1928, there was a fire that destroyed most of the amusement rides and damaged the carousel at Island Beach Park. And the owners sold off the property and the, and the rides that had not been destroyed. This had been partially destroyed, the, the Denzel Carousel from 1910. So anyway, what they did was here, I'm going to scroll up a little bit here. It says here, a Seaside Heights, New Jersey resident, Linus Gilbert, whose name should be uh, recognized in the history books, Recognize, rescued the Denzel Carousel and rebuilt it using car figures from other carousels. The resulting carousel is a mixed machine with Denzel and Charles Luth carving, carvings. That's why it's called the Denzel and Luth car, Carousel, because in this fire it damaged some of the, um, the horses and the menagerie animals, and they had to replace them with Luth carvings, who was another carver. There were carvers... Um, a bunch of carvers that were well known around the country and we'll learn about them a little bit more as the screen cast goes on there's more written about it and it says here gilbert bought the property at the north end of seaside heights it's not really at the north end it's more in the center of seaside heights and in 1932 set up the restored carousel in a frame building he also bought from burlington the carousel building was erected on land the land side of the boardwalk near the site of a former fishing pond it wasn't a fishing pond, actually. Um, it was a, um, a fishery, a pound fishery. That's what that's what I think the confusion is. They did pound fishing, which is, um, and the boys and girls in Seaside High School will recognize this. They do seining in the river, uh, not in the river, sorry, in the bay and in the ocean with Mr. Reichel and uh, Mr. Gower, I believe, does it, that you take a net and you pull in uh, fish from the uh, ocean, and that's what it was, a pound fishery. So that's not a fishing pond, a, a pound fishery. So anyway, the building was enclosed in 1937 when um, they built the casino pool building where it is housed at the very moment. It's going to be taken away from that building and again rehoused in a new building that we're building. And it says in 1965 there was a fire at Casino Pier, but it did not affect the carousel. I'm going to have to make this a little smaller because it is not showing all the birds. Okay, um, but anyway, it says here that the carousel was almost lost in 1984, but Dr. Moreland, uh, who was at the time a professor of classics and a dean at the City University of New York, convinced the owners to restore the carousel versus get rid of it and sell it off for pieces. That was very popular at one point in time. Now it's all about carousel restoration. But years ago, they said, oh, get rid of this old carousel and replace it with a fiberglass one. They're better. Well, not really. But there's only a few wooden carousels hand carved by the masters still left in production. And I had heard, and I'm not sure where this number is, why it's in my head, but there's only four hand carved carousels left. I don't know if that's exactly the truth. I will have to look into that. Like I said, uh, can't do it right this minute, but um, maybe there's more than that. But I heard four. I, I don't know why that number stuck in my head. But um, it was named after Moreland in 1986, and all the horses have names on them by the people that um, paid to preserve them. So anyway, and we'll talk about that a little bit more later. So we're going to scroll up a little bit. And this is interesting. There have been at least six other carousels in Seaside Heights over the years. 
The first carousel was a gasoline-powered machine installed in 1915. Now, mind you, Seaside Heights was founded in 1913, so the first thing they ever did to attract people down here to buy the lots that they wanted was build a carousel on the beach at DuPont Avenue where the big fire was. So the carousel that was there before the big fire was destroyed, that was a fiberglass carousel. Um, but before that it had been, in, I believe it was called the, the Freeman Illions machine. And um, before that, before 1955, they had had another fire that had destroyed one of the more original carousels. But it says here, it was housed in a pier building at the end of DuPont Avenue prior to the boardwalk being constructed. If the boardwalk was constructed beginning in 1916 and ended in 1921. I did know that. That's a well-known fact. Okay, a second carousel in Seaside Heights was a Denzel Mueller machine set up at the south end of the boardwalk, the same location, in 1917. So there was a, there was a gasoline-powered uh, one in 1915, and in 1917 they replaced it with an electric carousel. And uh, that was destroyed in a fire in 1955, like I said. And uh, a small, this is an interesting one, they call this Carousel X. A small Carmel Borelli machine was set up for the rest of the season, but it was determined to be too small. And then an Illions machine, this is, that's that word right here, Illions machine, no, uh, known as the Chaffentino Carousel, I don't know why they call it that, came from Coney Island, New York, came in 1956, and it stayed there until 1988. But unfortunately, unlike the Moreland Carousel, that carousel was sold off for pieces in 1988. That was in the heyday of taking horses off a carousel and selling them at auction so people could have a carousel horse in their house, a hand-carved carousel. Like the old adage was, get rid of this piece of junk, it's hard to maintain, it's this and that, an old wooden carousel, who cares? Get one of these new fancy fiberglass ones, they're better. But that may or may not, well, it, it, I believe it is not true. Uh, carousel, original carousels like the Denzel and Luth should be preserved. And that's what we're doing here in Seaside Heights. Okay, and uh, interestingly enough, it says here, um, when the... The Illions machine, the, the DuPont Avenue machine that was uh, taken apart in 1988, was uh, being um, dismantled. It went on auction, and when the auction, a, a Lincoln Head penny armored horse was stolen prior to the auction. I wonder where that is. That's the mystery that I'd like to solve. Where is the Lincoln Head penny armored stolen horse? I'd like to know. Whoever has it, is a scoundrel that stole it. Piece of history. They should have bought it like everyone else. They were worth lots of money. They, they, uh, these things garnered lots and lots of money. But anyhow, let's see here. And then there's a little bit more. There's more carousels in Seaside than just the ones that we associate with Seaside Heights, which are, of course, the Floyd Moreland Carousel on the Casino Pier and then the Freeman Carousel. There were more than that. And it says here, a three-row Alan Herschel carousel of unknown age called the Strand Carousel operated on the boardwalk somewhere until it was shipped to the Philadelphia Toboggan Company in 1940. And then it says there also was another carousel sent back to the Philadelphia Toboggan Company in 1940. So there was two other carousels that were in operation. So at one point in time, there were four carousels in operation in Seaside Heights. In 1940, there was only two. It was, two of them were taken away, apparently, and then it remained the Freeman and the, what would eventually become the Moreland Carousel um, later. Okay, so that I find that fact very interesting. Um, they Well, actually, all those carousel, the Moreland Carousel and the Freeman Carousel were in place in 1940 because the Moreland Carousel came in 1932 and the other one came in 1917. So they were still there, and there was two others somewhere operating on the boardwalk. The carousels were very popular, and they were uh, dismantled in 1940, it says here. And then it talks about the band organ, and here's the band organ here. I'm sorry that it makes that, that line up. I don't like that. But it says, one time there were two band organs on the Moreland Carousel, and the, the one that's currently the carousel's organ is in Pennsylvania, I believe. I think York, Pennsylvania, if I'm not mistaken being restored right at this time. And it's a Wurlitzer 146A military band organ. 
and it remains on the platform. It's actually not there now. It's taken away, like I said, and it's being refurbished. And um, it says here uh, it was, um, hang on just one second. Sorry about that. Um, it was redone in the 70s, and it was redone in 2001. And a glockenspiel was added in 1986. So the, the organs had to be redone over the years, and it is currently being redone for its new home with the new refurbished completely carousel. Okay, so anyway, like we said earlier, there are 53 horses on the platform, 18 standing, which don't move, and 35 jumpers, meaning that the pole goes up and down on the carousel. 14 standards are large outside row houses. All are Denzel carving, some predating the assembly of the carousel, which means that apparently when this was created in 1910, that the Denzel company used some of their older horses that they might not have used on other machines on this machine. So, and because it, it says here there are four horses carved in the 19, I'm sorry, in the 1895 style on the platform with a bowed chest, rounded nose, and prominent forelocks. And I'm not sure which picture they actually, I, I believe that this is the picture of one of those um, examples of the 1895, the one that I'm pointing out with my, um, with my uh, cursor. But, uh, and two of the horses have very similar trappings, including rolled cantles, squared off saddle blankets, and serrated chest and rump straps, which is rump straps, obviously, at the back of the horse is the rump. But um, interesting to note that there are some older pieces on there that predate the uh, actual 1910 when it was assembled. So, uh, and they remain. They survived the fire in Burlington. And uh, let's see here. And, it's, and this obviously is this one. One of the standards is the classic Denzel Arabian horse with his roached mane, wide fringe headpiece, and neck strap. It has a dog's head with a... Oh, it must, it's this one. Excuse me. Let me move this up a little bit. This is the one with the dog's head. The Eileen. And a uh, collar carved in the saddle. Yes, so anyway, that is that one. It's hard to... It would be easier in this book, and this book was written by, um, oh, you know, it's, it, I had it in the, it's right here. Oh, wait, no, it's not there. It, I had it when I first came on. Then The man who wrote this book, this is a chapter of a book, and when my teacher in cyberspace gave the credit for it, I just did not read it, but I will read it at the end. Um, actually, I can just do it right here so I can, we can figure out what this gentleman's name is. Go back. Oh, no, that's not it. Hang on a second. See, no perfect technology. Teacher in cyberspace at wordpress.com. Yes, Eric C. And I hope I'm saying it right. Pakel published a 300-page book as part of a series, Treasures of the Golden Age East Coast Carousel, and devoted an entire chapter to the 1910 Denzel and Loof Dr. Floyd Moreland Carousel of Seaside Heights, New Jersey. And this is a scanned PDF. So that's what we're looking at right now. But I wish this book would have... It talks about the different horses and things, like the Arabian horse. This is the Arabian horse, I suppose, with the neck strap and the... I don't know. It's confusing because you don't... It doesn't have them... Oh, below. Oh, of course, it says below. Thank you very much. Um, uh, it's just a little confusing sometimes which one they're talking about. And that horse is known as John. So, anyway. And then there's more, some more pictures of it. And like I said, you can go back to Teacher in Cyberspace at WordPress.com and you can read this article for yourself. You don't have to depend on what I'm saying. I'm just giving you a Reader's Digest version of it. A primer about our carousel. I could go on for a long time about our carousel. I'm part of the team that is responsible for it. And I have to know these facts about it. So I'm sharing some of them with you today here in cyberspace and on Mars, like I said. The Martians are learning about it, my Martian students. But anyway, just kidding. Um, it says here, so it has some examples of the different, it speaks of some of the different styles that are on the carousel um, when you read the article in depth. And um, it shows you some of the different, um, uh, let me roll this up here a little bit. It talks, like for instance, the brown outside row stander with a bird saddle has beveled mirrors decorating its breast, collar, and rump straps. So yes, so I think it's just, it has little mirrors on it. 
So it, it describes what they were and um, early Denzel traits. So you can see that some of them are Denzel carvings and some of them are Louf carvings and some of them are unknown or they're, they're questionable where they came from and they'll talk about that a little bit more too. And when you read the article in depth, you can um, you know, go through it more yourself and read it. I just wanted to share this you know, briefly with you. But here we go, okay. Here we go, 10 of the horses have been identified as Denzel characteristics. Three of the horses have breast collars separate from the chest. Okay, blah, 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 blah. That's not what I wanted to read. You can read that on your own. Um, okay, here we go. Efforts to identify the carvers of these horses have been inconclusive as they share traits of several carving shops. So there's ones on there on this carousel, which is called a mixed machine because it has different carvers on it, that um, an individual horse may exhibit characteristics of more than a single carving style with, for example, a Charles Camel mane and trappings normally associated with Marcus Ilians or Stein and Goldstein. All the people I just said, Carmel, Ilians, Stein and Goldstein, were different carvers of carousels in their time. And carved carousels, their heyday was the late 1800s, early 1900s. And um, they carved carousels out of wood. And they were very, very popular Americana, as Dr. Moreland would say. And Dr. Moreland teaches me about the carousel. I ask him questions about it every time. And he gave me a very complicated book. To, well, he gave me the name of it, and I bought it on eBay. Not on eBay, I'm sorry, on Amazon. And I bought a used one, thank you very much, because it was the cheapest. And when it came, it was the original signed by the author, which I thought was, um, I'm not sure. Um, I thought that was very interesting that I got one signed by the author of the book that Dr. Moreland knew the man. So anyway, so it says, it, it keeps going on here about their different um, traits of the different carousel horses and what they mean and how they're crafted and how they're carved and what they have on them. And um, of course you can read this because this is an 11 page article. I'd never sit here and read it all to you because I think people would either fall asleep or would never watch another one of my screencasts. Okay. Um, Yeah, let's see here. So it, it shows some more pictures. And it's very interesting. If you read the, the article, it's very interesting. Uh, around our carousel here, there's these mirrors with the with the carousel horse's head. They were added in, um, they're called the central housing panels. They were added in 1976, and they're fiberglass, these things. They, these are not um, original to 1910. And there's two chariots on the carousel, places where you can sit singly. And the wheeled chariot is being pulled by a wing griffith below. And the wing griffith, I guess, is, yes, yes, a griffith. It's right here. And um, that's a Denzel. This is a Denzel carving. The other chariot was built by E.J. E. E. Joy Morris and has a horned dragon pulling its non-wheeled sled. So, um, yeah, has a horned dragon pulling a non-wheeled sled. So that's this one here. So um, and then, of course, you could read more. Because of the, and it says here, because of the mixture of carving styles on the inner row of horses, there has been some speculation that these were carved by Oscar Buck, who also owned a traveling carnival in the 1930s. He regularly borrowed decorative styles from Carmel, Ilian, Stein, Goldstein, and others. Of course, it went down. Like I said, no perfect technology. Went down two pages. But um, anyway. Um, just a little bit more about this. Um, and like I said, you can read this on your own. I'm just going through it quickly. And this is, um, this course is interesting because this is named after Mike Adamski, who was my principal in Central Regional. And he worked on the carousel. When I was a young adult, I'd walk up there and I'd see him working the carousel, just like Dr. Moreland worked at the carousel. Mr. Adamski worked there too. And uh, that that's who that this horse is named, the lion. It's called Mr. A, the Lacey Lions, because he was the principal of Lacey after he left his stint at Central Regional where I had him. Okay, here we go. Let me roll down a little bit. And you can, this is the last page, but you can see it talks about how, and you can see here Mike, Flo, 
these are the people who um, who um, paid for the restoration of the individual horses. Like I said, 53 uh, animals and um, 53 horses, eight men menagerie animals, and two chariots. That's what the carousel is consists of, the Dr. Floyd Moreland. And you can go to it, like I said, all you have to do is go to my website, which is teacher in cyberspace at wordpress.com right here. And of course I have a link to it right here. And there'll be this video above it when I publish it. But um, all you have to do is click on that link and it will bring you to, once again, this article. And it's from January and April of 2013. And it's by that author I mentioned. And uh, that's who gets credit for this article. It's not an article, it's a book chapter. That's an out of print book. But because it's about Seaside Heights, I thought it was relevant to use it. And since I had it, and Dr. Moreland, thank you very much, provided this uh, bit of information to us. So anyway, like I said, um, going back to a pep talk with the priest, with Mr. Um, uh, kid President, do something that's awesome. Spark your pur pur purpose and passion. My passion is Seaside Heights history. And the centerpiece for our museum is the 1910 Denzel and Loof Dr. Floyd Moreland Carousel. So that sparks my curiosity and my fascination, and I want to learn more about it all the time. Like everything I learn in that article, I'm going to go up there and investigate the horses and see their saddle, uh, you know, their different um, saddles that they have and the different carvings that they have and the mirrors on the side. I, I think this is an interesting picture. This is the carousel in motion. And it, um, it's just an interesting picture. And then, you know, and then there's the organ, of course, which is going to come back to us when the carousel is restored. I don't, I imagine that the, um, the fiberglass heads are going to come back. I, I don't know. I don't know what this is going to look like when it is restored to its original condition. But, um, oh, and it had a brass ring. The, the, um, grabbing the brass ring is a, um, symbol of carousels and this particular the Moreland carousel had such a thing until 1966 or 1967 I'm not sure what exact year I've heard both years but um, it had that until then and um, that may or may not return in the reconditioned um, carousel that remains to be seen but like I said all these different uh, carving types and everything I have to learn because I have to give um, explanations of this carousel when it is um, returned. So I have to learn. So it's a learning process for me about the carousel. And every day, it, like I said, it's my passion. Plan a strategy, which is to learn them. It's still in place right now. I can go up there and check it out. And um, if I identify what's missing, Google it, take a class, ask Dr. Moreland, read this article. Um, realize your potential. You know, no one's going to believe in you if you don't believe in yourself and surround yourself with people who like the same things that you do. And luckily, a lot of my friends like Seaside Heights history like I do, and they want to preserve it. And because it's an interesting place and it has an interesting history. And um, like I said, once again, underneath, um, you know, uh, this where my video will go on the um if I just go backwards here, sorry. There we go. If I get back in teacher in cyberspace at wordpress.com, you can click on it and you will be able to go to that article and read yourself. And you'll be able to inform yourself and establish a contemporary catalog of research and theory to underpin the innovation. That's an a education quote, but it's my, um, uh, my quote that I use for my um, website. But anyway, that's enough for today about the Dr. Floyd Moreland Carousel. I just wanted to give you a little brief overview of that article, show you where you can find it, and I want everyone to share it because it is wonderful. Okay, thank you very much for watching. It's been a pleasure to be your teacher in cyberspace. Let me see if I can pull up that little, uh, I think it's in Finder. Oh, no, it's not. Oh, wait, it's right here. Screenshot. Of course, it's going to come up little. Everything... Because, oh, no, it came up big. There we go. Dr. Floyd Moore, I end with this. This way you can uh, email email me if you have any questions. I'm teacher in cyberspace at AOL.com. Uh, my, once again, teacher in cyberspace at .wordpress.com. And 
Thank you very much for watching and have a great, super nice rest of your day.